Ten years ago today, the music world lost one of its rock and roll legends. My name is Brett Flippin, and this afternoon, the KZY Information Center is going to pay a musical tribute to Janis Joplin. Today, we'll feature some rare interviews and live concert recordings of Janis, plus a recent interview I had with Myra Friedman, a once very close friend of hers and the author of her biography. To start at the beginning, we have to go back to Port Arthur, Texas, where on January 19, 1943, Janice Lynn Joplin was born. Janice had a pretty rough time in her childhood and teenage years, says Myra. She was the target of a great deal of abuse, but I think it's very important to understand that Janice provoked a lot of abuse. That doesn't mean that it was warranted, but she was provocative, uh, at least as they recall it. She was quite provocative. And um, adolescents, people in high school, are very conforming. I think that's usually, uh, you know, I mean, an accepted uh, behavior pattern for uh, adolescents. And uh, Janice did not conform. And that was very difficult for other people. Uh, it would have been difficult in any town. It was particularly difficult in Port Arthur, which is a very conforming town on top of the conforming aspects of, of normal adolescents. And Janice just did not fit into the mold, and so she was really made uh, very uncomfortable. She was called names, and they threw things at her, and it was a very, a very bad situation for her. Very bad. I just had to get on the Texas plane. Janice kept to herself most of the time during her high school years, and she grew a very strong interest in painting and the art world. Then eventually she learned to play the guitar and sing. Soon she was performing in coffee houses and bars. Then it was Chet Helms who was responsible for bringing Janice to San Francisco. He called her from San Francisco when the summer of love was upon the world and told her there was a band out there, Big Brother and the Holding Company. And they wanted a female singer. And she drove with friends to San Francisco then in June of 66 and made her first appearance at the Avalon Ballroom in June of 66 with that band. Janice was not accepted right away by San Francisco the way she had expected, especially by her new band, Big Brother and the Holding Company. They had mixed feelings about her. She was not glamorous the way they had expected her to be. And... Um, also, there were a lot of people in San Francisco who did not like the way Janice sang. They, uh, they really thought it was a lot of screaming and carrying on, and they told them to get rid of her, and it was not immediate, no. It took a while. But it wasn't very long before Janice had captured the hearts of millions with her raw energy and electricity on stage. Some say that Janice didn't really make it big until she brought Big Brother back to New York, where in February of 1968, they played at the Anderson Theater. Bob Shelton was then the pop rock folk critic for the New York Times. He came dashing up the aisles. I was in the lobby of the theater, quite stunned myself by the performance. 
he grabbed a hold of me and said, she is fantastic. Let me have a picture of her. And I did not have one. And um, he was very excited about her and very put out at me. And the only picture that I had was a group picture of Big Brother, and he didn't want that. He wanted a picture of her. And I dashed down to bring him a picture of her that I got a hold of from Linda Eastman, who is now Mrs. Paul McCartney. Um, I brought this picture to his apartment, but it was too dark, and so he cropped down. They, the Times cropped down a picture of uh, a Big Brother and just used Janice. And really uh, ran a headline that said, Star Born on 2nd Avenue. And at that particular time, I mean, you know, she really was incredible, and, and it uh, just was instant. It was more instant than, than things that happened in a long time. I mean, she was very charismatic and very, very exciting, and her audiences were uh, loved her and were very um, turned on by her. I don't, uh, I don't think that she could. She was able to control them to the extent that if they were ready to riot, she could usually keep that in control. 
but it, but it was an audience that would get very very excited, except that she would not she didn't like violence, and so it never got out of hand. Um, she was electrifying, you know, more than any performer that I've ever seen. I think that that uh, that people who um, people who never saw Janice perform, let's say, who get excited about a Bette Midler, really just don't know what they, what what they're talking about, frankly. Uh, I mean, Janice. Uh, it, uh, I, I really quite become speechless. It's very difficult to describe anything that electrifying and that soulful. Uh, there are performance, performers today who have a lot of energy, but but Janice had the energy beyond what I've ever seen, and plus she had tremendous depth, and she had a magnificent voice, and there really is very little that Janice didn't have except subtlety. She was not subtle. A while back was about a year ago, I think it was, I had this apartment in San Francisco. I lived on the third floor of this little tiny apartment building. I had two little two rooms and a dog, right? I lived on the third floor. And I used to walk around town and I had, you know, a couple of pairs of Levi's and a couple of t-shirts and I thought I had my shit together pretty good, man. You know, I was out in the streets talking that talk and doing all that shit and every time I found a nice piece of talent, He went right straight downstairs to the chick on the second floor. There was another chick on the second floor, right? And I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand. And I kept saying, Janice, what are you doing wrong? Except, well, so I decided to get up one morning <laughs> and check out the chick's action, right? Figure out what she had going on. I didn't have going. I got up at 9.30 in the morning, which I want you to know was an effort in my part. And I got about 9.30 in the morning, I hid in the stairwell right next to the chick across from her apartment, right? And I watched her, I watched her to see what she had, man, that I didn't have. And I'll tell you what she had, man. That chick hit the streets at noon. I mean, I didn't get, a, get up till three. The chick was already on the streets hustling, man. So I figured out what you gotta do, man. Every time you're looking for a little piece of action, and you ain't getting it, man. You know what you better do, baby? You better try harder, man.
just a little bit harder. Man, you ain't trying. Drive just a little bit harder. With your act hard, man. Come on, put it. Try just a little bit harder. Janice and Big Brother managed to put out one album, Cheap Thrills, but shortly after, problems occurred with the band, and so Janice felt that she should leave them for another band. The real truth of it was that they were just getting stale. They were becoming very demoralized because the press was giving her more attention than they were them. Uh, and as a result of being demoralized, they weren't working together in a very creative way. They were not creating any new songs. They were just not coming up with anything new. And she just felt that she absolutely had to make that change. You're listening to KZY 1190 Rock. And right now, we are retracing the steps of the life of Janis Joplin. At this point in her career, she was receiving a lot of press from her exciting shows and her wild lifestyle. So much press that one company gave her a Lynx coat for it. Her Lynx coat was, uh, she got it from Southern Comfort Company. Uh, and she got it because she pushed me into sending a whole lot of clippings to them, saying that she was drinking a whole lot of Southern Comfort and that she thought she ought to get something for the publicity. And I was never too terribly happy about that uh, because Janice, Janice's drinking was not the least bit amusing. Uh, and I thought it was kind of, I don't know, it just didn't sit terribly well with me. Uh, that, that she should be celebrated for drinking herself to death. And I think she kind of instinctively knew that because when she got the coat, she said, can you imagine getting paid for passing out for two years? 
Uh, but that's how she got the code. Janice was something to see and hear. She never hesitated to sacrifice the beautiful tone for the raw power of emotion. She once said, When I go on stage to sing, it's like the rush that people experience when they take heavy dope. I talk to the audience, looking into their eyes. I need them, and they need me. Sex is the closest thing I can come to explaining it, but it's more than sex. I get stoned from happiness. I want to do it until it isn't there anymore. Well, she'd make a lot of remarks about, you know, how she had to do it all now, because then you would thin it out later if you didn't do it now. If you stretched it out gradually, it was going to be, you know, all dried up and boring and awful by the time you were old. And then in terms of her singing, yeah, why should I hold back now so I can sing better later when I'm not even going to be around or something like that? They were all to that effect. I mean that was a kind of standard Joplin statement uh, in, in in different in, in you know in different variations. Very much get it while you can. 
Um, I used to think those statements were, they were very extravagant statements. They were very extravagant. However, they also were not that stupid. I mean, they weren't, they were, they were never stupid. She was never stupid. But they weren't that foolish. I, I think that the, that the, that the whole um, emphasis upon Jan, Janice was talking in one way in terms of a kind of sensational get it now, stay high type thing. Whereas there is something to be said for enjoying the present. I think that uh, is very sensible. Uh, I don't think that people can very comfortably live in the future. It's not good for your mental health to do that. Um, but it's like anything, you know, if you take it to a tremendous extreme, you may get into trouble with it. And Janice put too much emphasis on the present, I suppose. But that was it. I mean, it was just a standard variation of get it now. If you read the papers, darling, you know everybody's fighting with each other. You got no one you can count on, dear. Not even Gonna gamble on getting some sun on the road. But who knows, baby? Cause we may not be here tomorrow. And if anybody comes along, he gonna give you love and affection. You turn your sweet back on love No, no, no No, 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 no She could see me crying today Cause I've learned a bit to listen And if anybody comes along He gonna give me love and affection Yeah, hey, hey, yeah, hey Get it while you can You turn. 
you go and turn your sway back on love. In June of 1968, Janice appeared on The Dick Cavett Show. Janice, it's a shame you couldn't do an uptune for us, but, but a, a ballad like that will later do. Later in the show. Yeah, maybe later we can talk into it. You're really shot after, after a number, let alone a whole evening, I would think. Do you, yeah, do you yeah. tend to co kind of collapse after the show? Well, when you I do a show? no, usually because I get so turned on by doing one that it's hard to do, it's hard to stop after one, to tell you the truth, because it just makes you want to do more. Your engine is revved up. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> I, I, had a, I, I know had a, all the hip expressions, you see. <laughs> Engine is revved up. You're a real swinger. I could tell by your shoes, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, Janice, these were good enough for my grandfather. And they're good <laughs> for I had a lot of trouble last week. I, uh, wasn't that tune. We opened with another tune, and I tore a muscle. I heard about this. You, you tore a muscle somewhere near Maryland. Uh, it's closer to home than that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Where, uh... But I played 40 minutes, what? man. I did 40 minutes. Yeah, but how do you, how do you tear a muscle singing? It, from the exertion of... No, the... I went like that. Yeah? And actually pulled, a, literally <sighs> tore a muscle? Tore. I mean, like yeah, that? Yeah, every time it hurt. Did oh. you, could you feel it go? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What, what did they that, do? They what do they do? They set a muscle, or did they tape you he all up? He told me to be still. I want to ask you about that tune <laughs> that you just sang, like I just agreed to ask you about. You you uh, you wrote the first tune, right? Wrote the first tune. The one we just did. It's um, it's about men. It's about men. It was a little hard to tell what it was about because I was standing over there where the sound well, was a little distorted. Well, inside my head, that's what it's about anyway. Yeah. It's about, did you ever see those mule carts? Yeah. They, uh, there's a dumb mule up there, right? And they have a long stick with a string and a carrot hanging in it. And they hang this thing out in front of the mule's nose. Mm -hmm. And he runs after it all day long. And, and Some, who, who's the man in this, in this parable? The mule or the, the uh, person no, holding the carrot? The, the woman is the, is the mule. And <laughs> chasing the man, something that somebody's always teasing. Constantly chasing a man. Yeah. Who always eludes her. Well, they just always hold up something more than they're prepared to give. <laughs> I have to defend my entire sex, ladies and gentlemen. The burden of the Go defense. Right ahead. <laughs> of, of the <laughs> why, why in arm wrestling I could take you two out of three, I have a feeling. I hope so. Do you, uh, do you actually sit down when you get up in the morning and, and write out a song, or do you, when you say you write it, do you compose it on, you on your You just make it up. I don't write songs, I just make them up. They don't exist on paper, your songs, in other Sometimes words. I write down the words, I don't forget them, but I mean, I don't write songs. I mean, that's a whole different concept. I just make them up. Yeah. Do you ever get back to Port Arthur, Texas? No, but I'm going back next, in August, man. I guess what I'm doing. I don't know. Night I'm going to my 10th annual high school reunion. <laughs> Oh, I want to take movies and bring them back here. Hey, would shows. you like to go? Yeah. Well, I, I don't remember. I don't have that many friends in your high school class. Or, I don't either. Or mine, for that matter. I don't either, believe me. You don't either. You, what, you were, uh, weren't you kind of a... a <laughs> weren't you kind of a business administration major or something in, in high school? Or, no, no, something in your past. You were... Uh, I worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in school, I majored in, in art. I was a painter at the time. Yeah. And do you think you'll have a lot to say to your old high school classmates? I'm going to laugh a lot, man. <laughs> Were you not uh, surrounded by friends in high school? They laughed me out of class, out of town, and out of the state. Mm. So I'm going home. 
<laughs> How do you know? At Janice's 10-year high school reunion, she was greeted by her usual entourage of press reporters. What do you think about your town since you've left and come back? It's fantastic. I was across the river at the Falcon Club last night. Never had more fun in my life. <laughs> do you think there's hope Except the sometimes future? in California, I have more fun. What are they? Do you plan to come back soon? Oh, uh, 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 I have no immediate plans. <laughs> Did you entertain in high school, at the high school, when you were back here in your high school? <laughs> Only when I walked down the aisles. I mean, no, I, no, I didn't, no. <laughs> no, I was, uh, I was a painter and a sort of a recluse in high school. I've changed. <laughs> what happened? I got liberated. I don't know, I just started to sing, and uh, singing makes you want to come out, whereas painting, I, I feel, really keeps you inside, you know, and once I started singing, it just sort of 
you know, made you want to talk to people more and, and go out more and, you know, your lifestyle just becomes more a, a come out, flow out thing instead of a hold in and be quiet thing. How were you different from your schoolmates when you were in TJ? I don't know, why don't you ask them? It was they who made you different? No, I... In other words, you were different in comparison to them, or were you? I felt apart from them. <laughs> Did you go to football games? I think not. I didn't go to the high school prom. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, you were asked, weren't you? No, I wasn't. They didn't think... They, I don't think they wanted to take me. <laughs> and I've been, I've been suffering ever since. <laughs> it's enough to make you want to sing the blues.
was for you to understand to me you see this whole success thing uh it hasn't yet really compromised the position that i took a long time ago in texas that was to be true to myself to be the person that i that was on the inside of me and not play games like that's what i'm trying to do mostly if i in the whole world is to not bullshit myself yeah and not bullshit anybody else to be righteous to myself i mean to be tr real you know what I mean? And so far, you know, I'm I'm trying to to I'm doing that. I I, I am. You know, I'm not wearing cardboard eyelashes and and you know and girdles and playing in Las Vegas. I mean, I'm still being Janice. I just happens to be on a slightly different uh, level <laughs> or something now. And you know, I suppose it's because I've never been premeditated enough in show business that I was worried about putting on a a face you know what i mean yeah. so i can sit here and tell you the truth you know although that is slightly inhibiting i mean it doesn't it doesn't force a game on me because i refuse to let it force a game on me yeah so i can sit here and be just as honest as i would be in a bar although i'd be a little happier in a bar yeah. <laughs> you're listening to kezy 1190 rock southern california as we pay a musical tribute to janice what don't I Janice's main drug was alcohol. It always was. And, uh, and alcohol, when it is abused, abused, 
is a very destructive drug, and Janice was really into trouble with alcohol. Now, she was also into ter- serious trouble with heroin, um, and that would have gotten worse, but I, but I think that really, uh, maybe it sounds ludicrous, it really was not quite as serious as the... It was. I mean, you know, I don't want to ever diminish that, uh, and I don't want it to go the other way. I think maybe what I'm trying to do is to say how serious the alcohol problem was. Uh, and people tended to go the other way and say, oh, my God, she's using junk, uh, and, and think that her drinking was, was relatively harmless, but it was not. Uh, it, was, it was really into heavy lost weekend category. Busted flat in Baton Rouge, waiting for a train, and I was feeling near as faded as my jeans. Bobby thumbed a diesel down just before it rained and rode us all the way into New Orleans. I pulled my harpoon out of my dirty red bandana. I was playing soft while Bobby sang the blues. <laughs> when she wiped her slapping time, I was holding Bobby's hand in mine. We sang every song that Java knew. Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. Nothing, I mean nothing, honey, if it ain't free.
for a period of time, yes, she did kick it, and uh, uh, but then she uh, she did start using again, and um, her body uh, she had been off of heroin, which meant a lowering of the tolerance, and she also was drinking, and the combination of those two things produced, as far as can be put together, I have to add that as far as can be put together, produced what's called a synergistic a- synergistic reaction. That's like. Instead of two and two makes four, two and two make eight. Ten years ago today, Janice Joplin was found dead in her room at the Landmark Hotel in Hollywood. Cause of death? Accidental overdose of heroin. She was cremated, and her ashes were scattered by air along the coastline of Marin County, California. Well, I think the main thing is, you know, that I think that there, there, there is a whole audience of people out there who really did not have the privilege, and I consider it a great privilege. I consider it a privilege to have seen her perform and an honor to have known her. And I think that in spite of, of her, uh, the reputation that she had for a very erratic behavior, because she was erratic, that she had... Mm, a, a, a kind of warmth and magnetism and charm and, and humor and, uh, and brilliance that overrode some of that eroticism. And I think that it is unfortunate. I, I really, I'm sorry that, that more people did not have the privilege of seeing her. And I also would very much, you know, like to think that people might have some idea um, that any current representations of her, such as, you know, that people might think that what they saw in the rose came even close to what Janice was about. It just has nothing to do with it whatsoever. Not not on, as a stage performer and certainly not as a personality. In no way. There's no there's just no resemblance. I think that's important. Um, I, I I you know would like to think that someday somebody will come along that would be able to come close to that and people would have some idea of what Janice was like, but there certainly is nobody around at this time. Sitting down by my window oh, 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 Looking at the rain Sitting down by my window All around I felt it All I could see was a rain Something grabbed a hold of me, felt to me on the light below a morning tree. Yeah, hey, you know what I mean? When it's way too heavy for you, you can't hold it no more. Say, whoa, 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 it can't be just because I got to want your love, please.
the world is still crying too, man, and I can't get it together. I mean, if you got a cat for one day, man, I don't mean, if you, say, say maybe you want a cat for 365 days, right? You ain't got it for 365 days. You got it for one day, man. Well, I'll tell you, that one day, man, better be your life, man. Because, you know, you can say, oh, man, you can cry about the other 364, man. But you're going to lose that one day, man. And that's all you got. You got to call that love, man. That's what it is, man. If you got it today, you don't wear it tomorrow, man. Because you don't need it. Because as a matter of fact, as we discovered on the train, tomorrow never happens, man. It's all the same fucking day, man. So you gotta, when you want to hold somebody, you gotta hold them like it's the last minute of your life. You gotta hold, 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 Someday, some weight gonna come on your shoulders, babe. It's gonna feel too heavy. It's gonna weigh on you. It's gonna feel just like a wall. Oh, Dad. Many thanks go to Myra Friedman for her valuable time and insight. But most of all, I'd like to thank Janis Joplin, who gave her life to leave her mark in the history of music. My name is Brett Flippin. I'd like to do a song of great social and political import. It goes like this. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. I must make amends. Worked hard all my lifetime. No help from my friends. So, oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Oh Lord, won't you buy me a color TV? Dialing four dollars is trying to find me. I wait for delivery each day until three so oh lord won't you buy me a color tv oh lord won't you buy me a night on the town i'm counting on you lord please don't let me down prove that you love me 
And by the next round, oh Lord, won't you buy me a night on the town? Everybody, oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches, I must make amends. Worked hard all my lifetime, no help from my friends. So, oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? That's it. <laughs>